As Pink Floyd fans know, this year is the 50th anniversary of the hit album Dark Side of the Moon. And the good news is one of the founding members of the band is on his way to Australia for a tour. Nick Mason has rounded up a bunch of amazing musicians, including Spandau Ballet's Gary Kemp, to form the band A Sourceful of Secrets. And they'll be playing classic Floyd hits when they get here in September. I sat down with Nick for this exclusive interview. The Pink Floyd. You're going to hear them in a minute, and I don't want to prejudice you. You're in one of the most successful bands of all time, Pink Floyd. I think it's over 250 million album sales. Is it because of the drumming? Well, I like to think so, though weirdly, the rest of the band seem to think that's not quite the case. Mommy. We can put them straight on that because there's no egos there to contend with whatsoever. Have you always enjoyed being part of Pink Floyd? Oh, yes. I mean, we're a bit notorious for having a sort of interband fracas now and again. To look back, I feel extremely lucky. You know, it's an extraordinary thing. You have to remember, I come from a period when no one thought that pop music would last longer than a year or two. I've sort of more or less planned to go back to college after a year. 50 years later, uh, I still haven't made it back. You're the only member of the band to have played on all of the Floyd albums. And you now have this new band, A Source Full of Secrets, which carries the name of album number two, if I'm right. That's right, yeah. She's often inclined to borrow somebody's dreams till tomorrow. You're playing a lot of the early stuff, a lot of the Sid Barrett era stuff. Why do you like these songs? Well, I think I'd, I'm interested in perhaps in some cases reminding people of, of sort of where we started. There would be no Pink Floyd without Sid Barrett. So it's an opportunity, first of all, to remind people of what we used to do and how we did it. The music itself stands up really well, and there's so many other people who are doing later Pink Floyd material. I mean, apart from both Roger and David, who've been out playing all those songs. Probably the best-known tribute band of all is the Australian Pink Floyd. So the plan was to maybe give people something a little bit different. fans of cover bands like that and particularly as you say the Australian ones do you think they do a good job oh they do a fantastic job it's really annoying <laughs> <laughs> and I came into the studio and there was this guy standing there in a gabardine raincoat a large large bloke and I had no idea who it was I think it was David who said to Nick do you know recognize him I looked and I think I either shrugged my shoulders or at some point Dave sort of put me out to my misery and said, uh, it's, it's Sid. What are your memories of Sid and, and how did you say goodbye to him in your own way? We had no idea really how to deal with someone who was having that sort of breakdown. I'm going to play another one first in E. There's, no, there's only three. It's still not quite clear what really went wrong with him. There's still a belief that maybe it was LSD was part of the problem, or it could just be that that was his mental makeup. Our idea of Sid having a problem was to give him a day off and then go back to work, which was absurd now looking at it. We dealt with it very, very badly, really, but we just didn't know any better. Dark Side of the Moon is the album that's turning 50 this year, right? That's right, yeah. And Roger Waters revealed that he's re-recording the album without you guys. Uh, it's not quite like that. Oh, um, fill me in. I've actually heard some of what Roger was doing, and it's not a remake of the existing record. It's actually far more interesting than that. <laughs> Don't be afraid to care. 
given the complete success of that album, the extraordinary success of that album, when you guys wrapped it at Abbey Road, did you put your arms together and go, we have done good stuff? Like, you must have known it was something quite special, if not projecting the extraordinary success it had. You must have known you had created something quite special. We knew we'd done the best work so far. You know, we'd been operating for about five years, I guess, by the time Dark Side was released. And we knew we really liked it. But of course, after five years, you know pretty well that that doesn't guarantee that the record will sell. And then one day you find ten years have got behind you. No one told you when to run. You got on so beautifully well there from all reports, but these days it would be safe to say, well, just at this current time, that Roger Waters and Dave Gilmore. Our uh, relations are a little tense between them, but you seem to be Switzerland. You seem to be able to be okay with both of them. Well, uh, someone said, are you the Henry Kissinger of rock and roll? I said, no, I'm more sort of Neville Chamberlain piece in our time. This is wrong. We should rise up. Um, or just change the name of the band to Spinal Tap, and then everything will be hunky-dory. Do you talk to them both regularly? How, how does it play out? I talk to them irregularly. Right. I talked to Roger about his piece he'd done on Dark Side. And of course, I worked with David on that single we made for the Ukraine. I can't let you go without asking you about your passion for cars. Wow, look at this. You own a Ferrari GTO 250. Did you buy that with your dark side profits? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Good purchase. What's it worth now? $50 million or something? I couldn't possibly comment on that. You'd have to Google it. Nick Mason, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Did um, you Google it? I'll go I Googled it. It <laughs> is worth $50 million because there were only 39 wow. made, but he paid $35,000 in 1973 for it. Uh, so Dark Side of the Moon, that is the second biggest selling album of all time behind Thriller by Michael Jackson. It sold 50 million copies, was in the charts for 33 years non-stop. Wow. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. And this band that Nick's put together is absolutely awesome and it's and it's a show because Pink Floyd's always done shows. There's always been, you know, amazing light mm. shows, a wee bit of psychedelia, so it's got all of those elements to it. And new tickets have just gone on sale for the tour in Sydney and Melbourne. It's in September and the tickets are on sale now, so he's yeah. doing some extra shows. So Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets is what you've got to look up. Amazing. How divine. <laughs>